Hello there. I am DJ Jared. Of course, I'm DJ Ryan. And of course, I'm DJ Erich on Air and Space Radio. And this is our first episode. This story has a different version, but now, what is the purpose of this? What is the lesson? Everyone in life wants the good version. The one that you fall in love and get married. Have a house, great kids, they retire and eventually they die. Not everyone gets it, but as you can see in the story, they didn't have a good life, but in the end, it resulted in a good way. So, for today's podcasting, here's the short story of Happy Endings by Margaret Atwood. Salem's story begins in Kashmir, 32 years before his birth in 1915. There's Salem's grandfather, a doctor named Adam Aziz, begins treating Nassim, the woman who becomes Salem's grandmother. For the first few years, Adam Aziz treats her. Nassim is always covered by a sheet with a small hole in it that it is moved to expose the part of her that is sick. Adam Aziz sees his future wife's face for the first time on the same day World War ends in 1918. Adam Aziz and Nassim marry and the couple moves to Agra where Adam, a doctor whose loss of religious has faith and has affected him deeply, sees how protests in the name of independence get violently suppressed. Adam and Nazim have three daughters, Aliyah, Mumtaz, and Emerald, and their two sons, Mustafa and Hanif. Adam becomes a follower the optimistic activist man Mian Abdullah his anti-partition stance eventually leads to his assassination following Abdullah's death Adam hides Abdullah's frightened assistant Nadir Khan despite his wife's opposition while living in the basement Nadir Khan falls in love with Mamtas and the two are secretly married However, after two years of marriage, Adam finds out that his daughter is still a virgin, as Nadir and Pamtas have yet to consummate their marriage. Nadir Khan is sent running for his life when Pamtas' sister, Emerald, tells Major Zulfikar, an officer in the Pakistani army, son to be Emerald's husband about his hiding place in the house, abandoned by her husband, Montas agrees to marry Ahmed Sinai, a young merchant who until then had been courting her sister, Alia Montas, changed her name to Amina, and moves to Delhi with her new husband. Pregnant, she goes to a fortune teller delivers a cryptic prophecy about her unborn son, declaring that the boy will never be older or younger than his country and claiming that he sees two heads, knees, and a nose. After a terrorist organization burns down Ahmed's factory, Ahmed and Amina move to Bombay. They buy a house from the, a departing Englishman, William Metwold who owns an estate at the top of a hill. We will winky a poor man who entertains the families of Metwold's estate says that his wife Bonita is also expecting a child soon. Unbeknown to Willy winky, Bonita had an affair with William Metwold and he is the true father of her unborn child. Amina and Bonita both go into labor and at exactly midnight, each one delivers a son. Meanwhile, a midwife at the nursing home, Mary Pereira, 
is preoccupied with thoughts of her radical social lover. Joseph D. Costa wanting to make him proud, she switches the name tag to newborn babies, thereby giving the poor baby a life of privilege and the rich baby of life poverty. Driven by a sense of guilt afterward, she becomes an aya or nani to Salem because it occurs at the exact moment India gains its deep independence. The press heralds Salim's birth as hugely significant. Of course, I'm leader right on air and space radio, and this is our first episode. Young Salim has an enormous November nose and blue eyes like those of his grandfather, Adam, as is. His mischievous sister nicknamed the Brass Monkey in Born a few years later, overwhelmed by the expectation laid on him by the prophecy and ridiculed by other children. For his use, no Salim takes to hide to hiding in a washing chest while hiding one day he sees his silence. See his mother sitting down on the toilet when he was discover him. She punishes Salim to one day of silence, unable to speak his ears for the first time, a bubble of voice in his head. He realizes he is the power of telepathy and can enter anyone's thoughts. Eventually, Salim begins to hear the thoughts of, of other children. Born during the first hour of independence, the 1001 midnight. Children's a number reduced to five. A number reduced to five eight one by their tenth birthday. All have magical powers, which vary according to how close to midnight they were born. Salim discovered that Shiva, the boy with whom has switched at birth, was born with a pair of enormous powerful knees and a gift for combat. The midnight children, including Salim, are all set free. Salem goes in search of Parvati's son, Adam, who has been living with Picture Singh. The tree takes a trip to Bombay so Picture Singh can challenge a man who claims to be the world's greatest snake charmer. While in Bombay, Salem eats some chutney that tastes exactly like the one Sisaya, Mary used to make. He finds the chutney factory that Mary now owns, at which Padma stands guarding the cake. With this meeting, Salem's story comes full circle, his historical account finally complete. Salem decides to marry Padma, his steadfast lover and listener, on his 31st birthday, which falls on the first anniversary of India's independence. Salim prophesies that he will die on that day, disintegrating into millions of specks of dust. So the story ends right here.